five different reasons why men love easy girls. First, we're going to start off with the nature of men. Men have a desire to have pineapples, we'll call it. SEX is going to be known as pineapples, even if it is to their detriment. The urges can be controlled, but they do not stop existing. A lot of guys come on the chat and then they're just like, oh, I don't, I don't think like that. What do I, I don't, I would never think like that. I don't chase around. I don't chase around kitty cat. I don't chase around squirrel. Blah, blah, blah. I'm better than that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an evolved man. Okay. Okay, bro. Is all men that are hormonally regular have a desire for pineapples that's part of being a man and having a lot of testosterone flowing through you you can control it in the sense of being able to understand that it's happening focus your energy in other places and actively not give into it but the urge still exists the urge doesn't stop existing just because you don't want it to exist anymore always important now let me get one thing straight i'm not saying 24 7 every millisecond of every single day men spend thinking and trying to get pineapples i wouldn't go that far what i am saying is it is on their mind at least sometimes throughout the day every single day okay and that's natural there's nothing particularly wrong or unnatural about that because if we don't come to that understanding you're never really going to have an understanding of why men love easy girls so we all have to have an understanding of how stressful and intense that urge can be even if you have it under control even if you're a man who is celibate even if you're a man who doesn't partake or is a absolute virgin and a lot of my examples are going to have to do with food and i feel like when i talk about urges or desire or hunger to seek something out the best way for you to understand it as a woman is to understand the idea of being hungry for food you're on the couch you're sitting down you're watching let's say love is blind and you're like you just realize like you're super hungry and you're like oh my god i need to get something to eat right now so you're looking through uber eats to get something to eat, and all of a sudden while you're on your phone your best friend calls you you pick up the phone and your best friend goes hey I need you to come over here right now. I've got an emergency. I need you here right now. I can't even tell you about it. What's going on? But I need you to come to my place ASAP as soon as you possibly can. Speed here, speed here. And you can hear the desperation in her voice. And you're like, oh my gosh, I got to go right now. And so you hop into your car and you drive, drive, drive as fast as you can. You get to your friend. You take care of your friend. 30 minutes, an hour goes by. And now your friend's all good. You know, you've tucked her into bed at night and she's all good she's safe she's feeling well she's fine you guys took care of the situation and you realize for the past hour and a half or however long it's been since you've been taking care of your friend that you haven't gotten anything to eat and the hunger literally resumes as soon as the situation subsides and the reason i give that example is because the same way the urge is always existing but sometimes if you can as a man if you can put your focus on other things control it or suppress it in order to uh, put that energy into something else you can do that however it doesn't mean that the urge discontinues the same way in the example it doesn't mean that your hunger discontinues simply because you're taking care of a situation or another situation becomes more of a priority the energy of the hunger are you thinking your ability to think about the hunger subsides because you have another situation that is more of a priority but rest assured as soon as that priority moves out of the way or stops being as much of of, of a priority your hunger resumes for that food and you're starving again truthfully you were always starving but your focus and attention was on something else which didn't allow you to think and focus on the hunger number two access since men have a consistent desire for sex or pineapples they are looking to extract it with as little effort as possible i'm not here to offend you or hurt your feelings but i want you to step outside of yourself for a second okay and I want you to understand that the idea of being able to get pineapples is more than just like you, the human being. I want you to understand pineapples as the action and the fact that after doing the action for the man, there will be a level of sati satiation and fulfillment he feels after that action, regardless of the person. And I want you to understand that that becomes something to reach for and desire and chase after 
But in the process of trying to get more and more and more of that, men want to put in less and less and less effort to get that. That's not unnatural. Naturally, if you really want something, you don't just want it and want to work super, super duper hard for it. You want to get it with as little effort as possibly required. And that's not just with pineapples that's with everything and that's everyone with everything and for those of you who are like no that's not how human beings operate we don't do that we don't care about that i want things to be hard okay well for example right our inventions as human beings any invention that you see around you right are always striving to create things that allow us to use less energy and be more efficient and you're probably thinking to yourself, like what, like what, like what? For example, the car. The car didn't get created or invented because we had no means of transporting ourselves from one place to another. The car got created and invented as a more efficient means of getting from one place to another. Because theoretically, we could walk or swim anywhere on earth. That same destination would take a lot more work and effort to get to if we didn't have cars or planes or boats. We create things to make our lives easier and to make ourselves have to spend less energy to get the same result or an even better result. Men then develop tactics and schemes over time, right, in the process of growing and learning and, you know, seeing things, trial and error, they grow these tactics and their schemes over time to get them their desired result, which is pineapples, with the least amount of energy spent. Some of the tactics include lying, <laughs> right? Some of the tactics include selling you a dream. Newsflash, guys don't wake up out of the womb understanding how and when to sell you a dream. And remember what I said before, the desire and the hunger is always existing. Over time, they learn that if they go about things a particular way with you, they can extract from you what they want by putting in as little effort as possible. Number three, ego. When a man has access to any woman, it feels like a reflection on him. He makes the assumption the only way they would all allow me to be with them is if I had particular qualities or traits that made me better than all the other men who can't do what I do. Because the reality of it is not all men can have pineapples with all women. So if I'm a man and I can have pineapples with more women than most other men, then I must be the man. So inherently, there is an ego boost by understanding and knowing that I can do something that most other men cannot do. I must be better than those men. Uh, i big strong man. And so the idea of me loving, liking, being interested in easy girls is because I know I can get the simple ego boost from being with a lot of easy girls. And then I can look at myself in the mirror and feel better about myself because I must be the man if I can get access to all of these girls. Now, let me get something straight. I'm not saying, and we're going to get to this next, like right after this. I'm not saying that at every point in a man's life, he's thinking exactly like this. There is a process of change that happens as a man matures and grows. But at some point in their life, they are thinking like this, whether they want to admit it on a conscious level or a subconscious level. In the process of them learning, understanding their desires, learning how they can get their desires, all of these things start happening and start forming, taking shape. And so, like I said, the ego boost is involved in understanding that, hey, if I have a lot of quantity, that's good for me. Now let's get to maturity because I know for a lot of you and even the men that watch it will be like, <gasps> That guy has no idea what he's talking about. I would never chase around kitty cat. I don't even think about kitty cat. My, I just, I, it never even crosses my mind. He has no idea what he's talking about. That guy, he's an idiot. The truth is, in the process of maturing, yes, your desires change 
and your mindset changes. I'm not saying that that's not true. So I'm not saying that men don't mature to a point where the easy girls no longer become the priority. Okay. Cause remember how I gave you guys the example of being hungry for food. And then your friend calls you with an emergency. And all of a sudden you, you don't remember that you're hungry anymore because your priorities change. And that's fine. We all mature and our priorities change all the time, which is why maturity is a plays a very important role in why men love easy girls, because a man who is immature is the type of man that loves easy girls. Obviously, as a man matures and grows into a man, he puts childish things away. Eventually, most men realize that the fun girl is unsustainable and they need stability. The fun girl is always interested in being fun. And it's not fun to say no. No is boring. No is a party pooper. No is raining on the parade. So the fun girls are always saying yes to everything. They're going to agree with everything and anything so that they can be the one that is chosen because they are seeking that validation from the man. Here's where things get messy though. Fun girls do get attention because remember what I just told you guys, and this is why I had to segue everything I'm about to say right now with the ego, with the access, with the nature. Fun girls do get attention because fun girls are easy and easy going. Remember what I told you guys about access and remember what I told you guys about how men develop strategies to get more access with less effort. How much easier would that be made if a girl already exists with the mindset and the qualities and the character traits that make it even easier to access her with even less deception or tricks or techniques required? Because remember, I told you about the men uh, developing techniques to get access to these girls that maybe wouldn't have given them, them access if it wasn't for the fact that they came up with this technique or ability to sell dreams or convince them. But how much easier would that man's life be if he could meet a girl who already was ready to say yes to anything that he didn't even have to go through the process of selling her a dream? He didn't even have to go through the process of convincing her or, you know, lying to her or maneuvering around her or deceiving her or tricking her or whatever, because she already is so obsessed with being chosen. She already is so obsessed with saying yes to anything so that she can be accepted and loved and validated that the man realizes I don't actually have to do anything. She's already ready. <laughs> She's already going, as some people would say. I said that like a white man. Shh. She's already going because we all like to shame the fun girls. A lot of us don't realize that we might be the fun girl or the fun guy, but you don't realize that when you're desperate for validation, you remember, I say the same things all the time. When you're desperate for validation, you start moving and inching closer and closer and closer to being the fun girl. Being the fun girl looks very different on the outside than it feels internally when you are that. Because in your own mind, you'll be justifying to yourself why you should be going along with everything all the time because you don't want to rub people the wrong way. People pleasers are fun girls. They're not able to set their own boundaries for themselves and tell people no because they're so afraid that those people they tell no to will not like them anymore. When men want to get serious with their relationships, they seek the opposite of the fun girl and their approach goes from seeking quantity to seeking quality. The reason it's so important is because when you are looking for a man, and this is how everything's gonna get crystallized for you in a second right here, you need to be identifying what point in his life is he at? Is he in the place where he's still seeking the short thrills of the fun girls? Or is he at a place in his life where he's genuinely seeking the quality of a single good woman? There is a difference in the mindset. Some guys who are seeking the fun girls will actively trick you and convince you that, hey, no, I'm seeking the one quality woman and that quality woman is you. This is where the deception comes in and this is where you, this is where I come in, right? Because this is where I help you decipher the difference between the guys 
who are actually just looking for the fun short thrills, right? But want to sell you a dream to make you think that, oh, I'm one of the guys who's looking for the one quality woman, not the quantity of women. Meanwhile, they're over here texting their roster of like three or four. Their whole goal is to get you hooked like a fish to get you hooked, reel you in. And by the time you're on the boat flopping around like a fish and you can't breathe anymore, you're at their mercy. So by the time you're hooked and you're already into him and you already want to be with him and you've already committed yourself to him and you've already given your body, mind, soul and spirit to him. Now he has control. Now, when the magic trick is revealed to you and you realize what was behind the curtain, you can't move or go anywhere anymore. There's nowhere to swim. You're on the boat now, which is where we're going to get to the biggest point. And I had to talk to you about all of this just so we can get through this analogy and we can discuss this analogy in detail so everyone can understand it. The McDonald's versus the five star restaurant analogy. Let's imagine you are taking a nap until 9 p.m. at night. Don't think about it too much. You wake up and you realize that you are starving upon waking. Like this is the hungriest you have ever been. And you realize that you need food right now. You go downstairs into your kitchen, obviously to get some food because you are starving you. And it's not one of those. Oh, I want a snack on some crackers and some cheese. No, I want a big, I want a greasy meal. You know what? I need salt. And you realize you have no food in your fridge. You have no food in your pantry, no food in the cupboards, no food anywhere to cook anything. So now you have to leave your house to get food because remember you are starving at this point. When you go outside for the sake of the analogy, for the sake of the analogy, I know that there would be more options than this for the sake of the analogy. Let's only give you two possible options for going to get food. Your two options. One of them is to go to the McDonald's that is directly across the street from your house. You can go to that McDonald's. You can get you a Big Mac. You can get you a large fries. You can get you a junior chi junior chicken in Canada. It's McChicken in, in USA. You can get you some chicken nuggets. You can get you a wrap. You can get all the things you want. You can get you a McFlurry. Hopefully that ice cream machine is working. You can get all the things you want from that McDonald's and for cheap. You also know it's going to come fairly quickly because remember you're starving. You're not really trying to sit around and wait for them to cook your food from scratch. You just want it made and you want it made now. Your second option is a five star restaurant that is a hour drive away over there. That five star restaurant has the absolute best food on this planet Earth food that will make you feel so good that will satiate you so much. You'll just literally you'll have an orgasm as you're eating the food. Three course meal, everything. Amazing food, amazing quality. However, it's an hour drive away and you are starving. You've also woken up out of bed and you're looking pretty bummy today. This is a five star restaurant. On top of that, you can't just walk into the five star restaurant. You have to make a reservation and the only available reservations are four hours from now or three hours, whatever. So you have an hour drive and you also have a minimum three hour wait before you can even be seated at your table. So basically four hours before food will even hit your stomach if you choose the five star restaurant and you are starving. What are you more likely to choose? Are you more likely to choose? to go and eat at the McDonald's or are you more likely to book your reservation and eat at the five star restaurant, which is an hour away in three hours? Let's remove the relationship aspect from it just for a second. For the sake of the analogy, let's understand and break down why people are choosing McDonald's over the five star restaurant. Hunger is motivating us to make a decision, not necessarily that we will make will make us feel good in the long run, but a decision that will make us feel good right now, because we're not so concerned about eating something that will have the most amazing, uh, awesome quality and, and, you know, have the most amazing presentation. We're more worried about something that will satisfy the hunger that we are feeling right now in this moment. 
Remember, the key element is that you're starving because the starvation will motivate you to make a particular decision. If you weren't starving or you weren't extremely hungry, your decision making would be drastically different based on the urge that you either did or didn't have, which is what is leading people to choose going to McDonald's, which is across the street, because it's closer, it's more convenient, it takes less time, it, it, it's less of a travel distance, and less of a wait for the food to actually get in your belly. All of those factors lead to making the decision, for most of us, that we would rather go to McDonald's in that scenario than spend an hour driving and then another two hours waiting for our reservation at the five-star restaurant, even though the five-star restaurant food is better and higher quality. What we want to do in that moment, what our priority is in that moment is solving our hunger. So whatever satisfies that starvation as quickly and efficiently as possible will most likely be the top choice among most people. Okay, I'm speaking in generalities, obviously. Now, continue staying with the with the analogy. That doesn't mean that in that scenario, even in the hypothetical scenario, that there is no place for the five star restaurant. Because if there is a scenario in which I can satiate my hunger, someone even brought it up. I would eat, get a burger from McDonald's, and then I'd make my way over to the five star restaurant. I'm not saying that that was necessarily an option, but I want you to imagine the thought process of if I can satisfy the top priority, which is the starvation for the food, then I can make a better decision on quality. So if my priorities change, my decision making will change because the change in my priorities changes my mindset which changes my approach because there is a place for the five-star restaurant. If I want quality food, if I want good presentation, if I want amazing service, if I want a great experience, I'm going to do my best to prepare myself for the five-star restaurant. So I'm going to book a reservation in advance. I'm going to go get a haircut or go to the hairdresser, put on a nice outfit. I'm not going to look like a bum. I'm going to plan my day out so that I know that I have time allocated to going to the five-star restaurant. There is a time and place for the five-star restaurant, just not when I'm starving at 9 p.m. and I just woke up from a nap and I have no food in my house. But there will come a time where I am prepared mentally, physically, and emotionally to go to the five-star restaurant, in which case I will do that. And when I show up at the five-star restaurant, it will be because I have prepared to be here. The reason I went through that long analogy, because the five-star restaurant and the McDonald's represents the two types of women and the two types of ways men will categorize women. The McDonald's is obviously the fun girl in this analogy, and the five-star restaurant represents the woman that you would want to make your wife the wifey material. Now, everyone gets bent out of shape because they're like, I'm not the McDonald's. No way I'm the McDonald's. No, not a chance I'm McDonald's. I'm the five-star rest five star restaurant all day, five-star restaurant all day, five-star restaurant all day. Here's the thing though. The five-star restaurant has a dress code. The five-star restaurant, you have to book a reservation. You can't just show up to the five-star restaurant whenever you want and think you're going to get a seat. You can't just show up to the five-star restaurant looking like a bum, barely dressed, and think you're going to get a seat. The five-star restaurant has high prices. You ain't gonna walk in there with no $20 bill and think you gonna eat anything at that five-star restaurant. The five-star restaurant has order and standards. So the five-star restaurant has a lot of reasons why they will say no to you, even if you show up at their door. Are you following what I'm saying? The same way the wife will say no because the wife has standards for herself. The only person that is going to have access to her is someone that meets that criteria. When you go to the five-star restaurant, if you are not dressed properly, if you don't have enough money, if you didn't book a reservation, there is no, they're not gonna sit there and be like, oh, that's so sad that you didn't book a reservation, but because you didn't book a reservation and we're so sad that you didn't book a reservation, we're gonna give you a complimentary seat on the house and some free food on the house. Oh, you don't have any money? 
oh, and, I mean, that's so, I'm gonna play you all. Oh, that's so, such a sad story. Because you don't have any money, we're gonna give you all of our food for free. Complimentary. No, you don't know. Get the F out. If you do not meet the standards that we have set for this restaurant, you do not belong here. You have no place here. You don't get to sit down and enjoy here. The same way the wife will say, I have standards, right? This is why I always talk to you guys about your wish list, making your wish list, knowing what you want, knowing what you want in a relationship and out of a man. Because you come to the table, you say, this is what I expect from a romantic partner who is going to have access to me. If you do not meet those criteria, that is fine. You just won't eat at my restaurant. Good with me. There's plenty of people who want to book a reservation at this restaurant. Doesn't matter to me if you can't meet those criteria. And the reason I say that is because when you embody, I'm not saying that you're a restaurant or you're food because a lot of people get bent out of shape. Oh, you're calling me a food. You're calling me a restaurant. I'm so much better than that. What inanimate object are we today? Relax. I'm trying to help you understand the concept, okay? Now, the more you can embody the five-star restaurant energy, what's going to happen is men will adjust their approach based on what category you are. If you are the five-star restaurant, they will understand, I cannot come to the five-star restaurant dressed like a bum with no money and no reservation. I have to meet the criteria or I don't get to enjoy, indulge in the restaurant. There is no other option. So while you might turn some people away, because remember, even in our analogy, most people chose the McDonald's. So the five-star restaurant didn't get a customer simply because the five-star restaurant had such higher standards. You see how that works? You chose the McDonald's. So you didn't give your money to the five-star restaurant simply because the standards were a lot higher for the five-star restaurant for most of you. So the five-star restaurant lost out on a customer. The same way when you are a wife, when you represent that five-star restaurant, you will lose out on some people. Some people will be repelled by that. Some people, some guys won't like that because you say no to them because you're not a yes girl, because you're not down for anything, anytime, all the time. Because you have standards for yourself, they will walk away from you. You will not get customers or you'll lose customers because of your standards. That is okay. Are you seeing how this is all coming together? That is okay. And that is actually what you want to happen. You do not want people showing up at your restaurant who are not prepared to meet the standards and expectations of your five-star restaurant. You want people to understand that if you do not meet the criteria, there will be no access to the restaurant. And if you don't meet the criteria, don't even bother coming to the restaurant. Because eventually what happens is the only people that will even show up at your door, like the five-star restaurant door, are people that have booked a reservation, that have the money, and that are dressed accordingly. You don't worry about how much people are going to McDonald's. You don't worry about which customers you're losing out on to McDonald's. You don't worry about whether or not people think your prices are too high or people think the reservations are too far in advance or people think that the dress code is too strict. You don't worry about that. You keep your standards for your five-star restaurant, the standards for your five-star restaurant. And the people who are ready to meet that criteria will meet that criteria. Did the five-star restaurant don't sit and cry? Oh, I'm so sad that Jimmy from uh, Toronto didn't come to my five-star restaurant because he had no money. It's so sad that he wouldn't come to my restaurant. Or it's so sad that he came and he realized he didn't have a reservation and then he went to McDonald's and said, I'm so sad. Can you please come back? I'll give you the food for free. I'm so sad that you would come and leave. So please, I'll give you the food. No. The five-star restaurant doesn't give a damn. If you show up without the criteria that is specified, you get the F out and we don't miss you here. I know some of you guys, what's the difference between the five-star and the, and, the, and, the, and the McDonald's? What's the difference between the fun girl and the this, right? That consists of your friends, the places you hang out, the way you talk, the way you dress, your looks, all of that stuff. Everything that embodies you as a person is what will put you in one of those two different categories. This is where you're not going to like what I'm saying, okay? Because that means you have to be accountable to you. If you 
want to think i'm the i'm the five-star restaurant i'm the five-star restaurant but you present yourself like mcdonald's don't be upset when people come to you with five dollar bills ready to get a big mac you need to take accountability for the way you present yourself so if you think there are qualities or character traits or things that you're doing that present you or even could be mistaken for a McDonald's, you better fix that. You better fix that and you better fix it fast. This is not meant to be an attack on you, but I want to utilize this so you can look in the mirror and say to yourself, I want to be a five-star restaurant. Am I representing myself as a five-star restaurant though? Because sometimes, and this happens to guys too, sometimes the idea that we have of ourselves in our mind is not a true representation of how we project ourselves outwardly to other people. And if those two things aren't in line, we'll constantly be confused on why people approach us and treat us in a way that isn't congruent to what we believe ourselves to be. When people look at your building, it's got to look like a five-star restaurant. When people step into your building, it's got to have ambiance like a five-star restaurant. When people look at the service or receive the service, it's got to be serviced like a five-star restaurant. Everything has to embody exactly what you are trying to project. If what you are trying to project is not in line with how people are actually treating you, then you know there is something wrong. If you are being approached like McDonald's and you have in your mind that you're a five-star restaurant, you need to reevaluate what is making people believe or think that you are a McDonald's. Because rest assured, there is no confusion between a McDonald's and a restaurant with three Michelin stars. When you go to the restaurant with three Michelin stars, you have an idea that you're at a restaurant with three Michelin stars. When you go to a dirty, dingy McDonald's, you have a pretty good idea that you're at a dirty, dingy McDonald's. Guys will attempt to test you to see, to see if you are really who you say you are. Everyone wants to believe they're that girl. They're the it girl. They don't take no BS from nobody. They don't have no time for no one who isn't ready to meet their criteria. But the reality of it is, and I'm just telling you this from a guy's perspective, the reality of it is most girls, majority of girls will fold in the right circumstances. I'm just here to tell you the truth. I'm not here to um, make you feel bad. I'm not here to offend you. I'm not here to make fun of you. I'm just here to tell you the truth about the man's perspective. Most guys understand that in the right circumstances, given the right situation, the right words, the right actions, the right massaging, most girls will fold. Most five-star restaurants will be uncovered as frauds. And so there is a consistent testing that goes on where guys will see and poke and prod to see, is this really a five-star restaurant or is this really a McDonald's underneath a couple of nice buildings? They really sell the best food in town or is this really just a Big Mac in disguise? Let's say, for example, you're like, uh, you know, um, I'm not going to be, you know, doing anything, any se actual thing on the first night. So just get that out of your head, right? You want to stand on business. Uh, yeah, we, um, we ain't doing none of that on the first night. So just get that out of your head. I'm a respectful, respectable girl around here. Don't, don't take me for one of these other girls. And then he's like, okay, yeah, yeah. I, 100%. I believe you. Yeah. So we, we can meet up, right? Yeah. Yeah. But just understand nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. We're not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. I believe you. So come over, we'll just hang out, we'll just chill. So you come and you sit on the couch and you guys are chilling. And he's like, and he's having a chat with you and he's talking to you and you guys are getting along. And he's like, oh, you know, you want some, you want, you want something to drink, you want some wine, you want some, you know, we could, we could have some shots or whatever. You know, you get something to drink, you're feeling the vibe, you guys are good, you know, having a great conversation. It's very intimate, you know. Now you guys are a little bit closer. You guys are talking face to face. Now all of a sudden you're kissing. Now, all of a sudden, you're touching. But remember, you're not one of these other girls. You know, you don't really. It's just, that dude doesn't work like that for you, right? You're not like these other girls. So you remind him of that while you guys are. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 100%. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But you keep kissing and you keep touching. And the urges for you get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Until now, his hand is over your squirtle. And now things are becoming blurred. 
you know, all of that stuff you were talking about. I'm a five star restaurant. I'm you know, I don't I'm not like these other girls. I'm not like these. Uh, you kind of forgotten everything that you were talking about earlier. And just that fast, he's inside of you. And you realize that you are actually just like all the other girls, except you justify it because you guys were vibing and you guys, you know, it, it, it was, feels good. And it was like, you know, such a good, uh, you know, it felt good. And it was late night and, you know, you just wanted, you know, you were really, it was really intense and all that stuff. And you felt a vibe, right? All of your typical justifications. But you go home and you think to yourself, I'm a five-star restaurant still. I'm a five-star restaurant still. I'm a five-star restaurant still. Meanwhile, he's literally, as you leave, he's looking at his phone. He's thinking, damn, that was such a good McDonald's. Maybe next time I'll indulge in more, more McDonald's. That was a great Big Mac. And you're walking, on, I'm, I'm a five-star restaurant. I'm not like any of these other girls. I'm not like these, any of these other girls. And he's sitting there like, yeah, sure. You're, you're, you're nothing like any of these other girls. Your squirtle's way wetter than, the, than these other girls. Way wetter. I wouldn't dare to call you uh, McDonald's. You're like a premium McDonald's. <laughs> I hate to say in a way that I know is going to be like, damn, that hurts. But like, like it's, it's the honest truth, right? And they're not bad people for testing you because remember what I said, they're trying to get access to what they're trying to get access to. And so they're going to use their learned schemes and their learned deceptions and their learned lies to get access to what they've been trying to get access to. They also understand that a lot of people want to present themselves as a five-star restaurant, but a lot of people ain't no five-star restaurant and they know that. So what do they do? They let you live in your dream world. Meanwhile, they indulge in your McDonald's all day long. Imagine if the cashier at the restaurant was like, these are premium Big Macs, not the regular Big Mac. Respect it as such. You'd be like, bro, just get me a Big Mac. Is it the same price? It's the same price, but the way we cook the Big Macs at this McDonald's is way different. We have premium quality here. We take our ingredients to the next level. We cook all of our Big Macs with loves. Is it still $5.35? It's still $5.35. Great. Get me one Big Mac. I don't give a damn how much love you cook it with. It's the same Big Mac. I'm here to eat a Big Mac. I don't care how amazing you profess the quality to be because there's nothing sweeter. And I'm telling you this as a man. I'm telling you this as a man. So do with it what you will. There's nothing sweeter than having a girl who's convinced she's a five-star restaurant and showing her, literally showing her that she is nothing more than a McDonald's or treating her like a McDonald's. There is no greater ego boost for a man than knowing the girl that all of you guys are treating like a five-star restaurant, I treat like a McDonald's. You are all peasants compared to me. That's the life we live. What do you, you want me to tell you the truth or you want me to tell you some lies?